Can you discuss MTHFR? For those of you who think we're sort of getting over into the nasty language area, nope, that's something else. MTHFR in this environment means methyl tetrahydrofolate reductase. You see why we use MTHFR rather than to big, big word. Now here's the thing, those of you who have heard the mitochondrial theory, the mitochondrial mechanism, there's a whole lot to that. It's been the most popular theory mechanism for aging for what? Since the 60s, at least the 70s, 60 years, more. Maybe my math is bad, but basically it's saying the mitochondria is a furnace and you've got between dozens and hundreds of them in a cell. So like hundreds of them in a heart cell, maybe a few dozen of them, you know, a skin cell or something like that that's not actively working like that. And once you get 60 years old, that means you've got a 60 year old furnace still burning. What happens with a 60 year old furnace? Those of you who saw the movie, A Christmas Story, you know, the father would go down, he'd start messing with the furnace and coughing and cursing at it. And all of a sudden smoke would come out. If you get that kind of image, you know, that's not that far off from the mitochondrial theory of aging. And guess what? Now, that may sound like a bunch of theory, but where does that start to impact the economy? Well, guess what? There is a huge market out there for antioxidant vitamins. You know, your antioxidants, A, C, and E, multi-billion now. And it's just grown by, what, a factor of 100 over the past 20 years. And it's because people said, well, that's the whole thing. It's oxidation. And you want antioxidant vitamins to calm that down. What is an antioxidant? And what does that have to do with the old furnace in the Christmas story? Well, the old furnace, again, is that mitochondria. And what we're talking about is oxidized materials. These oxidized materials, sometimes you get a hole burn in the mitochondria and they come seeping out. And so you get these increased oxidized materials. Wait a minute, what is oxidized? Oxidation is what it sounds like. It's combination with oxygen. And guess what? That's exactly what burning in a fire is. And if you think about it, oxidation is also called rust. So the mechanics call it rust. The chemists call it oxidation. Kids playing in a campground call it fire. It's all related and it's all the same thing. So you've got a controlled fire going on in your mitochondria. That's how we make energy. And that's what allows us to move around and be alive. But you know, every advantage in life also tends to have some disadvantages and that's the problem. MTHFR, what has that got to do with all of what we're talking about, mitochondria and oxidation? So reduction is the way to reverse that oxidation. So there is a couple of ways of thinking about this. Oxidation is the addition of oxygen. So guess what? What happens when you add hydrogen and oxygen? You get water and that is an inert material. So that's what's going on. The mitochondria are involved with getting energy out of oxidizing things like glucose. They break these carbon-carbon bonds apart. They extract the energy out of it. If you look at a fungus, for example, who doesn't have this kind of process, they get like six energy units out of a six carbon glucose molecule. If you go to a human though, we get more like 36 units instead of six units of energy out of that glucose molecule. We do it because we're oxidizing oxidizing it and breaking down every one of those. So that's a great advantage, but it also creates the disadvantage of oxidation, which oxidation causes the wrinkles in my forehead, the loss of elasticity in our tissues as we age. It causes plaque, heart attack, stroke, you begin to see what the pros and the cons are. But again, that still doesn't help us understand what MTHFR is. So now we get to that question. That's how the human body actually deals with this burning embers lying around causing damage problems. It uses methyl tetrahydrofolate reductase and related enzymes to reduce the B vitamin complex and those B vitamins then go in and put that fire out. You do that through the opposite of oxidation, which is reduction. So now you begin to realize, oh, well, so that's where this multi-billion dollar antioxidant vitamin craze came from. But then you begin to ask the question, well, 
for the antioxidant vitamins are A, C, and E, but you just mentioned folate, which is a B vitamin, and you said it's B vitamin complex. Well, that's the reality. You can go in and add A, C, and E, and those can help a little bit, but the human body has its own system and it involves very much using B vitamin complex. Now, what is MTHFR specifically? Well, it's a genetic problem. You see, a lot of us have two and some of us have three. Some of us have more, but what am I talking about? Genetic variations. So there are three major genetic variations which decrease our ability to manage this B vitamin complex for reduction. Well, that's what MTHFR is all about. Methyl tetrahydrofolate reductase. Now, there are tests that you can do for it. I've had it because I used to work at a human genetics lab. And guess what? I have two of the three. And there was another YouTuber doctor. He's done a lot of silly stuff, making fun of songs like Weird Al, but he's also had some good content. One of his content items was not so good. You see, he's an ICU doc. He said, MTHFR, reduction problems. Does it make a difference? No. Well, guess what? If I'm a, an intensivist and I'm working in the ICU with patients, no, it really doesn't make a difference. But if I'm a prevention doc and I'm helping patients understand and what's driving their disease. MTHFR makes a big, big difference. It drives the destruction of our eyes when we have prediabetes. It drives the destruction of our arteries when we have plaque. It drives the destruction of our kidneys when we have kidney disease, all associated with prediabetes and diabetes.